The insane true story of Paul Vario's legacy. In the history of organized crime, the American Mafia has always been a very interesting puzzle. The Mafia is made up of many different groups, each with its own history and people. One of these groups is the Canarsie Crew, which was a big part of the Lucchese crime family and was also known as the Vario Crew. In this movie, we'll learn about the interesting past of the Canarsie Crew, including how it got started and who led it during hard times. Let's start from the beginning. Salvatore Curiel and the Gagliano family are where it all started. Salvatore Curiel, who was a powerful person in the world of organized crime, was a key part of how the Canarsi crew, also called the Vario crew, got started. Curiel was born in 1887 in the province of Agrigento on the island of Sicily. His crime career began long before the commission was set up in 1931. Because of what he learned and did when he was young, he became a recognized and powerful part of organized crime. Curiel became well known because he was in charge of the only crew in Brooklyn that was connected to the Gagliano family. In those early days, Harlem and the Bronx were the places where the Gagliano family had the most power. But with Curiel in charge of the family's crew in Brooklyn, the family's reach grew, and it became more stable in this important borough. Salvatore Curiel was the real leader of the Brooklyn area because he was in charge of the Gagliano family's Brooklyn branch. His ability to plan ahead and move around in the crime on world won him the respect of his peers. Curiel's low-key personality let him work quietly, which increased his power within the company. Under Curiel's direction, the Canarsie crew laid the groundwork for what would become a powerful and important part of the Lucchese crime family. The crew did everything from standard mob things like loan sharking, gambling, and extortion to new things like getting into the profitable and mob-controlled garment business. Salvatore Curiel's reputation as a strong and recognized gangster set the stage for who would lead the Canarsie crew in the future. As he started to think about retiring, he tried to find a leader who could take over for him. This led to the rise of Paul Vario, who would lead the team into a new age of fame and power. In the end, Salvatore Curiel's early role as leader of the Gagliano family's crew in Brooklyn had a big impact on how the Canarsie crew came to be. His strategic thinking and low-key approach helped the crew get a base in the important borough of Brooklyn. This helped the crew become one of the most important groups connected to the Lucchese crime family in the long run. Curiel gave up power and Paul Vario took it. As Salvatore Curiel, a veteran gangster, thought about retiring, one question of who would take over as head of the Brooklyn-based team was a big one. In 1960, he told a close friend, Joseph Joris Schiavo, about the job offer. Schiavo kindly turned it down. Schiavo was happy with his low-key role in the group. He chose to focus on his interests in the clothing business, working with people like Dr. Rudrow and the famous Tommy Lucchese while staying out of the spotlight. Schiavo's choice led Salvatore Curiel to start looking for a good person to take over as captain of the team. The man he picked was Paul Vario, whose name would go down in mob history as one of of the most famous and important people in the Canarsie crew. When Paul Vario became captain of the Lucchese crime family in 1960, he didn't wait long to show that he was in charge. Vario was a good leader because he was smart and clever. This quickly won him the respect of his peers. With a keen eye for chances, Vario grew the crew's business, strengthening their power in many illegal businesses, especially the clothing business, where they had a lot of control. The Canarsie crew grew and became known as a power powerful group within the Lucchese crime family thanks to Vario's leadership. Vario was a master at navigating the complicated world of organized crime. He was known for making smart decisions and making clever alliances. The change from Salvatore Curiel to Paul Vario as leader was a major turning point in the history of the Canarsie crew. Vario's guidance and vision would set the stage for a successful and powerful reign, making the crew a major player in the American Mafia's web of power and intrigue. Paul Vario, the Canarsie Crew's Rule When Paul Vario was leader of the Canarsie Crew, the dreaded group within the Lucchese crime family had more money and power than ever before. Vario was known as a smart and clever gangster, which gave him a lot of respect among his peers and made him a strong boss. During his amazing 28 years at the top, Vario faced many problems that put his skills as a mob boss to the test. Even though he had short turns as an acting consigliere and spent a lot of time in jail, Vario was
was able to lead the crew through rough times with his unshakable drive and strategic mind. Vario's success was based on his network of trustworthy and skilled friends, each of whom played a key part in running the crew's activities. Among these faithful lieutenants were his brother, Salvatore Babe Vario, whose loyalty and dedication were similar to Paul's, and Peter Pete the Killer Abenati, who was known for being cruel and successful in carrying out the crew's missions. Vario's inner group also included his brother and Pete the Killer, as well as Alfonso Fu Curiel, the son of the former Canarsi crew boss Salvatore Curiel, and Rosario Sacco, who was known as a trusted enforcer who made the crew even stronger. Paolo Zupalo Diana and the powerful gangster Joseph Joris Chiavo also helped the crew's standing in the Lucchese crime family. The Canarsi crew did a lot of illegal things, like loan sharking, gambling, and bribery, and did them well because Vario was a smart boss. Notably, Vario's smart move into the clothing industry strengthened the crew's power even more, since this rich industry was known as a mob base. As the leader of the Canarsi crew, Paul Vario will always be remembered in the history of organized crime. His smart guidance and ability to handle the complicated underworld helped the crew grow and had a lasting effect on the American Mafia's complex web of power and corruption, filling in as captains and taking over. During the time Paul Vario Vario was in charge of the Canarsi crew, there were times when he needed acting chiefs to run the crew while he was away, either because he had to take care of family business or because he was in jail. Salvatore Babe Vario, who was Paul Vario's brother, was an acting captain in the 1960s, and Peter, Pete the Killer Abenati, was an acting captain in 1974. During Vario's brief absences, these trusted lieutenants played important parts in making sure the crew kept going and did well. When Vario had to be somewhere else, they were able to take over without any problems because they were good leaders and could keep the crew running. The Canarsi crew was strong and worked well together because they had capable acting leaders. This showed how important it was to have a well-organized and stable network of associates, which led to the crew's long impact in the Lucchese crime family. After Vario, a new leader for the Canarsi crew. In 1984, when Paul Vario was sentenced to 12 years in jail, there was a big change in the Canarsi crew's leadership. During Vario's absence, different people took on key tasks to run the crew. Frank, Frankie the Watt Manzo, is said to have filled in as captain for a short time, but the attention quickly turned to Paul Vario's son, Peter Vario, who became captain in 1988. When Peter took over as captain, he was the first of his age to do so. He passed on his father's legacy and responsibilities. Tragically, Paul Vario died in jail the same year that Peter Vario took over. This marked the end of an era for the Canarsi crew. When they lost their famous boss, it left a hole that would be hard to fill. The change in leadership of the Canarsi crew during this time was hard and important for the crew's future. Paul Vario was a smart and well-liked gangster, and his reputation loomed large over the crew as they tried to figure out the complicated world of organized crime after he died. The change would set the stage for the Canarsi crew to face new tensions and difficulties in the years to come. Al Diarco and Louis Dedden followers in uncertain times. After Paul Vario died, the Canarsi crew had a hard time making the change to a new boss. During this time, Al Diarco, who was also known as Alfonso Little Al Diarco, was in charge of the team. Diarco was close to the family boss, Vic Amuso, and Amuso is said to have asked Diarco to plan several killings. After Vic Amuso and Anthony Casso left the Lucchese crime family in 1991, Al Diarco took over as the acting boss. Louis Dedden was an important member of the Canarsi crew when he was in charge. Dedden joined the Lucchese crime family in 1982, and he was known for robbing a guarded truck and doing other illegal things. But as time went on, Al Diarco's job as acting boss got harder, and he had to testify for the government. As other mobsters rose and fell in the Lucchese crime family, there were more moves and changes in the Canarsi crew's leadership. That's all for the video today. We will be right back. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe.